Yo, fresh video, new day, air riders going on the car. In the last video that you watched, you seen that I um, hold on a minute. How did we just walk past the Frenchies? How did we walk past? We got Quacho, we got Dixie. Quacho's on air right now again. Dixie's got Camber. Always got Camber, Dixie. Before we get into it today, you will notice I'm wearing one of our new jerseys in purple. This is an absolute beast. And it's ready for the day. And I've got one of our camo snaps on. If you're ordering one of our hoodies, t-shirts, wallets, sticker packs, whatever, ever, ever you are ordering, go to the hat section on the page, add your favourite snapback and it'll be free. Free snapback cap with every single owner order. That's gangster. So in the last video, you've seen that I unboxed the air tank, the compressor, the ECU, the remote, the front struts, the rear struts, and all the wire and harness and all that. So... It's about to get real. It is approximately right now, Tuesday evening when you're watching this video. 21.19, 20 past nine at night. McGill is about 30 minutes away. Um, I've not got gas today, I've got gas on Saturday again. Pretty much I'm running solo for the first hour or so. So don't fear, I know I'm fitting air ride on my own, but I've had a lot of advice. As you could imagine, I know a lot of people and I've had a lot of advice and I've got a lot of help if I need it. So if I, if I run into any issues, I can ring someone, I can get someone down here. I know some self freelance mechanics, they'll come down and help. It's gonna be a heavy one. It's gonna be a really, really, really heavy build this. We're going show car with the 7R. I hope you're excited. I hope you get involved. Make sure you like the button for me on this video and let me know that you're hyped for the show build. Before we get into today's video, I'm gonna show you one more time real quick, all the air ride, and then I'm gonna show you where we're starting today. Really quickly, in case you missed the last video, here's the remote, looks a bit like an old school iPod, except it's better because it says airlift on it. That's good, we've got wires, we've got bolts, nuts, we've got um, airlift performance, ECU, this is the brain of the operation. We've got compressor, we've got a polished tank, polished compressor, wire and harness, front struts, rear struts, and that is all. It does not look that hard. It looks time consuming, labor intensive, and more than anything rewarding, especially in the chrome. Looks so sick, I'm ready for it. So, basically, me brand new three ton Halfords Advance Jack, 160 pound, is broke which is annoying, but McGill's got a jack with him. But I'm gonna see if I can get this up and on axle stands using this jack. You have to like pull it up and like twist it the wrong way and stuff to get it to drop because something's happened in the system with the hydraulics. Basically, it's not working anymore. Long, long story short, I need it replacing. I look really ghetto throughout the whole build, but as long as my air ride works, we're winning. Bear with me, if you're a mechanic, I want to formally apologise for the visuals that you had to watch. Let's go. So I'm going to hope to jack this bit up so high. So, it is the next day, I think it's Wednesday when you're watching this video. McGill got here late, late last night, didn't you? Very late. Very late. And basically, we didn't get a single thing done yesterday because we ran into a problem where I couldn't actually get the wipers off. The wiper arms have got to come off to be able to get to the top of the struts there. And basically, we bought this tool, show them the tool. And basically, it gets your wipers off. Is the nut stuck on it now? No, it's got, I've got it off. <laughs> but basically... Just put it on so you don't lose it. Everything I ever do usually is rushed and rough, trying to make videos and all that stuff. I don't want the air ride setup to be like that, so I decided to just call it a day, come back to it tomorrow, and I'm glad I did, because now we've got it off properly. I've not destroyed my trim, anything like that. It's on the axle stands at the moment. It's kind of sketchy putting it on the axle stands, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, it's kind of sketchy, but they're there. They are holding. Why not? It's up in the air. It's ready to go. Wiper blade Wipers is off. off. Sick. Okay. Get in there, so we've took the wipers off, we've took everything off, we're exposed, we have to actually trim this out and make it a lot bigger so that we can get to 
the adjustable camber and stuff and the dampening and all that for the alignment at the top. So the alignment screws there at the top of the new front strut. We have to be able to get to that. So every, every Mark 7 I've seen online, you have to chop this out a little bit and make it a bit wider. It's happening. It's never not going to be on air from now on. So I'm genuinely not that bothered. And even when I am bothered and I want to put coilovers back on, you can still do it. So it doesn't really make a difference. It is what it is. So that's off. All that stuff's off. The wheel's off. The wheel arch lining is off for the airline. So now is the fun part. Basically, I'm going to take a guess. I'm going to start. I'm going to unclip this delete for the DCCD. Hang this up somewhere safe and out the way. Um, I'm then going to take this thing off because I get new ones. I'm going to put a set of mole grips in the centre, undo the rear bolt, take this off. I'm then going to see if it drops enough or if it doesn't. I'll know more in a minute, basically. So the KNW V1 is officially out and we have got the first bagged strut ready to go. All we had to do was take the anti-roll bar bolt out and undo the back of the hub and I think that was it. I think we wound up the coilovers so they were lower. Mate, I want to get your natural reaction. Do you want to have a laugh right now? Yeah. Put that up to the top of the inside. Look good. Oh, mate, no, watch, it, watch your reactions. Think how much we struggled and how slammed the car was. <coughs> and what, this just goes in easy. What, Yeah. Mate, that's like, that's mad. Fucking <laughs> you know. hell. Show them that, yeah, it's lit up now. So we struggled to get it out before, and look we'll at that. It's like, what? That much, like, probably more, isn't it? It's so funny. <laughs> yeah, compare it next to this. Yeah, look at that. That's the difference right there. And that's probably being generous. That's probably actually, like, that's probably more, like, true. Yeah, so it's what? Probably a good 100 mil. That much less. Yeah. So there's the KW V1. There's the new Air Ride bag. It's happening. Airlift performance. I'm going to read the user manual because I don't know what you're supposed to do with stuff like this here. I'm guessing that's just totally bottomed out, which is what we're going to go for. I'm going to read the manual. I'm going to see what's what. And then we're going to install it over here. Sweating. The good news is, I think the Air Ride's going to be easier to put back in. Although I, I think we're going to have to jack the wheel up quite a lot, don't you? to get it into the bottom of that strut. Do you feel more confident after looking at that there? Yeah. Yeah, I do. This is sick. All right, stay tuned. Hey, I was gonna withhold from posting this, but I thought it's kind of funny. The Golf R is about to go into surgery. Look, I've got Royal Mail cut up postage bags for the bin. I've got me shirt and exposed right at the top is the top mount here. Basically, you have to open this up a little bit. So I've got a grinder, I've got my glasses on, and I've got to cut this open and basically whiz this section off. So you've got like this bulbous section at the top here, what comes up, you need to open all of this up so that you can use the camber adjustments and then you can always play about with different wheels and so on. This is actually pointless, this section. So I'm not concerned about cutting it out, but it needs cutting out, so we're gonna go right now. <laughs> Okay, we're about a quarter of the way through. It's kind of sketchy. Still going. Ryan's here. And he's chopping. Chopping. I did, however, cut through a small piece of my wiring loom, which is not a good thing to do. Getting sketchy by the minute. So, are we done grinding for now? For now, you could do tides in all we need this, right? Um, so, we're done for now grinding. We're going to fit the struts. We'll come back in a minute and show you where we're at. Peace. Oh, we've actually took this one off as well, look. This this side is also strutless. Nothing in there, all the linings out. So we're quite close to having the front bags in. Stay tuned. The TFE tape is on and we are slammed in the bottom of the hub. So we've got to do the bolt, we've got to put a drop link on, got to tighten it up at the top. I'll come back in a minute when it's fully in and we've completed one corner. So, still going strong. It's got to be about seven at night. What time is it now? We're nearly hitting the 12 hour mark, 9 o'clock we started, quarter to, eight. quarter to 8, 
it's been a hairy one. I'm gonna show you where we're at real quick as a little interlude. We're kind of just smashing through it. It needs two of us. You've probably never seen me with hands like this in my life. You don't get hands like that film of the videos. You do sometimes, I suppose. Basically, the rear dampers in, as you can see, that's the damper. I actually was under the impression that you didn't have normal dampers with air ride. It was you as well. Yeah, I didn't I have to. Wouldn't have really understood it. I actually didn't show you this. I've got to paint the ends and clean it up a bit. But we cut this out a little bit so that we could get to the dampers, we uh, so that we could get to the camber settings on both sides. Um, thanks to Ryan for helping out with that. Pretty much would have been very, very sketchy. That's where we are. Pretty sick though, check it. So my airline's in, my delete kit for the DCCD is in. So basically now I've got braided hoses, they're gonna go sort of that way. And ready for the airlines. The bags are in there, as you can see, looking absolutely serious. So cool. It's actually deadly. PTFE take the hell out of all the fittings and everything. So now we've only got to install the rear airbag. The rear airbag. I'll show you in the instructions. This is how you've got to piece the rear airbag together. Like that. So basically we've done the damper, that's done. We've just got to screw it in down the bottom. I hope you're enjoying today's video and episode. This is pretty big, I reckon it's the biggest project I've ever done. The Mazda roll cage was pretty crazy, but this is next level. This is actual mechanics business, which me and Craig don't do, so there you go. So for some reason we haven't actually filmed putting a single airbag in the car. This is the rear airbag, as you can see. Airbag, airline. You've got to have the airline facing away from the wheel into the center of the car, which is quite mad. Anyhow, maybe you'd have it like that, away from the wheel. I think anyway, as long as it's away. Because we can twist it once it's in anyway before we screw it, can't we? Yeah. So we've got to squeeze this at the moment. There's no air in it. That's how slammed it's gonna be when it's on air. <laughs> That's like a whole coil over, whole spring compressed to that. That is borderline insanity. So what I've got to do right now, I've got to get this piece in the bottom here at the same time. Okay, <laughs> now, the airbag is in. We did it three times, didn't we, lad? Yeah, yeah. Three, three times. Like, we kept raising it up, tightening everything up, and then we'd go in the instructions and it'd be like, you need to do this next, but you couldn't do it with it upright that heavy. So. That side is done. The ride height is set. I've got some advice off Steve Fraser and Offset Auto House, how to set it. So that's done and set. It's tight, everything's talked. The airbag's in, the airline's facing the right way. We're just gonna put the wheel on and we're gonna see how it dangles right now. So it's not as frightening as the last one, is it? Nah, it kind of looks, yeah. Coil over-ish? Yeah. Nice. Nah, it's still like a big arch gap there. Yeah. Cool. Nice. So we've got a bit of space there. Feeling a bit more confident about my wheel choice. Everything. Mechanics worldwide. I came in this garage with white socks this morning. I came in with clean hands. I've got cuts. How are you doing, lad? Four. Same here. <clears throat> Look at this, man. We are done. Bags are in. Everything's in, dampeners are in, dampers are in, session day, struts, airbags. We finished this corner just now. This corner looks beautiful. Airbags in, all the way around. Craig McGill's driving us to Halfords where we need some rubber grommets to run some airlines into the boot build of the air rided Mark 7 Golf R. Thanks for tuning back in to check out another video. I want to say, I hope you're doing all right. I hope you're having a great week. I think when you're watching this, it's midweek next week. I'm not sure. We're currently out in the BMW M2 and it's absolutely savage. I wanted to remind every single one of you watching right now that we've got a pretty cool deal right now on Owner. Owner is my clothing brand. The link is in the description. I'm actually wearing it right now. Even though we don't sell this exact t-shirt anymore, we've got loads of sick t-shirts, hoodies, jerseys, sticker packs, wallets. There's so many look cool little products. We're also doing a pretty cool deal where you get a free snapback cap with every single order. So if you go on the site to place an order, do you hear right the BMW M2? Hell no. Why not? Just not into it that much. How come? Don't know. Like ghetto-ish, riggy? Nah, I don't know. I just like the more OEM stance. 
like track stance. Yeah, probably. Yeah, probably. like motorsport. I was like that. I remember the days when I was like that. He is one. I don't reckon it looks that good on M two Z either. But then you said that. M two one air. What's he talking about? If you're into air rad, M two one air is like the best. Doesn't get any better. Doesn't actually get any better. Massive arches and everything. You're mad. Now, be honest though. Since we've installed the air rad, yeah. yeah. Have you been a little bit more into air rad? Yeah, it has changed my. Because I think I used to. Just, used Finish your sentence. It's changed you are. My opinion a little bit. Oh, the air rad's happening. I used to slate it, didn't I? Yeah, he hated. It. I used to be like, check this out. He used to be like, nah, man. Wait till, and we're going to a car show. In fact, by the time you're watching this, we've been to a car show. Okay, welcome back. Welcome back to the garage. We've already got started. Using this thing, we've drilled four holes for the airlines. I'm gonna show you exactly where I've drilled them. Basically, quite a lot of people with show cars, they use these plastic grommets, but doing that, you have to drop the exhaust, you have to drop all kinds of stuff. I wanted to do it where basically I could do it on the side of the road if I need to fix it, a little boost leak, a little air gap or whatever. I wanted to do it, so I've done one there and three there, so it sort of stays in this little gap. From the underneath, there's like about a handful of a gap here. So I've decided to just put them all there where it sort of works well, that I can get to them whenever I need to adjust them. So I've put these little grommets in, I've pierced holes in the grommets to run the pipes through, and we are ready to run some airlines. So, the plan now, is I actually got one of these as well to wire the ignition switch in. I've never done anything to this degree, have you? No. Never before. Not. But I would say, how hard would you say so far it's been out of 10? Six and a half? Yeah, it's not that bad, nah. is it? I would say the mechanical side of doing the shocks, the struts, the bags, all that stuff's been a lot more harder than this stuff. This stuff requires a lot more like thinking. Yeah, I'm just making, yeah. Making sure you don't like no lines that are going to get... Pinch it and stuff, yeah. So, we're at a point now where I'm going to hoover up all these metal filings because I don't want any of them to pierce me lines. So I'm going to hoover those up before I do anything else because all the drilling's done. I do, however, have to drill two more for a exhaust because I want the noise that goes tss to be on the outside of the car. And just because it's cool. I also want to do the, wa the water escape. However, I've been informed that it's so minimal that you could leave the water line in your, in your car. It's like a drip every year or something. However, it may as well go out the car, to be legit. So, would you have it out your car? Yeah. Yeah, get it gone. So, we're going to run some airlines right now. So, this is where we're at. We've got our first airline. These airlines go all the way underneath the car. Cable tied up in neat places. They go all the way to an adapter what goes in the... So this adapter goes into a, an adapter that has a quick release on this end here. So basically what we're going to do is feed our first one through our first hole. So we'll probably keep the two right ones as the right lines. So you feed it through like so. Then you go under the car and like that, yeah. And that would be in the line there, I reckon. And let's give it a tiny bit more slack, so push down. That may tops keep it keep it yeah, held there. Yeah. Worst case, we can buy more line, can't we? Yeah, there's loads left. Right, so that's cut. So if I push that through, we've got to take the hub bolt out to drop it to put the airline in from the control arm side. This is the fifth time. Fourth time. Probably is like the fifth. The <laughs> fifth time we've had to drop this control arm. We ended up doing that corner at like midnight last night once. We did that corner dialed, didn't we? Yeah, because we learned from this one. We learned five times on this one. We rang S30 BMX on Instagram. You know who he is. He's the guy who's hooked me up with all the advice on the air. He's like on speed dial when I want to know what to do. We rang him yesterday and he went, do yourself a favour. He went, cut your rear air lines. Plug them in before you, before you put all this back together. And we were like... Nah, we'll do it tomorrow. <laughs> if someone tells you to do something, do it. Right, that corner's done. I'm not joking when I tell you this. You tell them what to, how many times have we done this corner? Six times. <laughs> Six times. This is the final time though. Basically on the control arm that goes to the centre. It like holds everything together. When we said 
we ran it like differently. Long story short, basically I just FaceTimed S30 BMX fish again, Steve Fraser. Saved the day once again. It saved the day once again and he said you've got to run it underneath the control arm and cut it in. We tried to do it and kink the hose, so we've changed the hose. Honestly, it's n we are nearly there. We've got three bolts left, haven't we? And then it's done. And then it's done. It's all in the boot and all into the battery then. We are so close. Stay tuned. Basically, we're slicing into this because we're going to do everything mounted on the surface of this for me very first non-pretty boot build. What I want to do, I want to get the whole air ride running. I'm focusing on the external of the car at the moment to get it slammed on air, looking sick, working, working in the cockpit, everything dialed. Then, when I have done that and I've achieved that for some future episodes, I'm either going to go up to offset and get an actual savage boot build done, or I'm going to try and do one myself. So, right now what we're going to do, we're going to put a hole around about here, or here, we're going to mount the four air lines up, where basically we're going to, in fact we're going to bring everything through that line, we're going to do the, comp the tank, the manifold, compressor, tank or something. We'll figure it out, but we're going to run all the cables up through this false floor, be right back. So we're going to go, Straight down the centre, if there is one. It's about the middle, isn't it? Yeah, it's about the middle. We're going to slice this. That was painful. <laughs> that is actually painful. What I don't want to do, though, is snag the lever. So I'm just opening this up for all the cables. Now, I actually reckon this will look pretty cool. We've got the drill, this thing, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to do this out the car in case I snag any air lines. That would be, that nice. would be grim. We've done a lot of work to get these air lines in the right place. So what I'm not going to do is snag any of them. Still got an MX-5 aftermarket bumper there to go on the rear, but we are distracted right now. I think you can have that like bang in the centre. Bang in the centre is like that though. Basically, we are very far along. All the hoses are up. Let me show you where we're at. All the hoses are up. Manifold screwed down. Electrics plugged in. Compressors about to be screwed down. Just a better way to put it in. Eh? Yeah, we've got to put this. We've got to tally these up to the other wires. Um, we've then also got to find a way of connecting it all together sort of like technical i'm not going to rush it i've ordered a pizza because i've eaten i've ordered a pizza just because i've ordered a pizza <laughs> um i think when the pizza comes we're going to call it a day maybe might come back in for an hour later it's cracking on what time is it let's have a look 23.03 right now 11.03 p.m this is day two the compressor's pretty much in. We've got another three bolts to hang it in. The um, manifold is in. The tank is in. Oh, the tank's loose, sorry. But we've laid everything out. This has to go at the bottom, that has to go on the side. And pretty much all of this is up. We have pretty much come to the conclusion that today, if we can't get this finished, it's because we haven't got the skill to finish the job. Would you agree with that? But we have got, we have, we have we've got, got the skill. It. We can do it, can't we? Yeah, 100%. But we're sort of thinking if we, the only thing I think we're going to struggle with is splicing the ignition switch into the fuses somewhere. A switch live, it's called. So when you turn the ignition on, the compressor, everything else comes on. Not the compressor, the manifold comes on. So we're nearly there. We haven't got a lot to do. I reckon we've got probably two hours' work till we get to the point where we're like, can we actually finish the job? I reckon within an hour or two we're going to be in the front of the car. Yeah. And that's like near the end. That. That's, that's, that's rooting the remote in that. That's mm. easy. So we're nearly there. All the corners are done. All the bags are done. All the rooting's done. All these air lines are basically coming through this little cutout. I've drilled one, two, three, four holes for the compressor legs, which are those legs in the left side of the screen right now. We'll go through what we've done and what we've fitted to the compressor to the tank in a minute 
the compressor's in, plumbed in, we've got a filter on the end, and we've got the hose connected to the end of the tank. So what we're going to do now is trim these down a tiny bit, probably like that, and then plug them in to the manifold, which is going to be kind of cool. Yeah, boy! So, I can see down here, and it says front left. Yeah, do we want to, like, organise them? I mean, before... we're never going to move it, are we? Hey? We're never going to move it. No, but if we organise it... I see what you mean. So they're not, like, they're just coming out... Where they need to come out. Basically. So can you see front left anywhere? Uh, oh, no, front right we need. Yeah, so this one, I think it's this one. That's your lighting. Looks like PP. It's right front in there. Right front, yeah. Sorry, which one's that? That one. This one. Right front, so we're going to shove that back down there a bit. We're going to clip it. Oh. It's hard to bend it. It is, and I'm trying to make sure I don't, um, you know, kink them. So that one's done. And then this is the exhaust, which goes in the very end. Yo, Basically, for those of you watching right now, this is the exhaust. When you hear a car that's bagged, they run the exhaust outside the car. That's It's actually for the choice of it being louder when you release the air out of the tank. Because you can't just have it in your car doing its own thing. However, I kind of want it outside the car for the noise. Full hype. Hold on, does it look like... No, what? that's fine. I thought it was cut on a weird angle. Exhausting. Ow. Once all this is bottled, it's going to start looking like... Savage. It's basically like the back's done, isn't it? It's just working forward now. Yeah. So we've got these bolts that go on the top with washers. We're going to do the first side first. Right, I need to know it. Which is going to go in these holes. Grab us a uh, socket. Yeah, I just want to see what size that is. Looks like a 13, if I'm good at my job, my day job right now. I could tighten. Oh, you... Which one are you doing? The back one? The back one, sorry, bro. That's right. That's I can do the front. Man. All right. Right. Yeah, and then we do that one while, while you lean down there, the front one. So we're using these, which you get supplied with the air kit. And basically, you put both ends in that, you crimp the metal on the inside, then you heat the heat shrink up. And then, just to be on the safe side, we're wrapping it in this after it. So, even though that looks like it's only insulation taped, electrical taped, it's actually been um, crimped and heat shrinked on the inside. So, do not panic. Do you want to give us a demo of how you're doing it? Where's the other bit? Um, yeah. On the ends of the black here. I'd maybe do it, you see that's the way of twisting it. Yeah. Oh, do you nearly lose it? Yeah, you give us a de Have you twisted them wires so there's none sticking out? Yeah, 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 yeah. This one's all frayed, look. Pretty chilled. We're not Wait, auto electricians, the but... The wires on this side are thicker than that one. They are? Yeah, these are like well thin on these ones. No way. Hold on. Maybe it needs to do less or something. All right, chopped the load out when I pulled the black sleeve off. <laughs> no. So like that. What pliers are you going to use again? Was it these? Them ones work better, innit? Eh? You might need two hands. I've been upside down in the passenger side of the car. I've ripped all the panels off at the bottom. How long would you say I've been in the car upside down? Probably an hour. An hour. Jamming screwdrivers and everything. Couldn't feel it. It's because it's coming through so high up there. If you get on the top, you can just fit your hand through. It's like here. Yeah. It's obviously where we couldn't get round. Where you couldn't way. get round from the side. So I've got on the engine bay, I've had enough. And I'm looking in and I've just asked Craig to shove it through. And I've seen the screwdriver, but it was by the tag. Yeah, because I could feel it. Because I could feel it. Bit of vibration. Yeah. So we're going to tie it to a flathead screwdriver. 
I'm then going to slice it from this side and pull the wires through. We're so close to there, right? Being a done, finished job right now. I'll be right back in a minute when we pulled the wires through. Stay tuned. <laughs> They're through. Oh my God. These are the compressor wires. Oh, mate. That was the hardest part of the job. Getting them wires through the dashboard was grim. Honestly. So now we've got to crimp them, hook them up to the battery, then they're on. Jesus, that was insane. Oh, it's a really, really bad mess. There's probably things you don't want to see. I'm going to the glove box, but don't worry. Basically, this thing is um, the ignition switch. This goes there, up the side, in the back of the glove box. Piggybacks off a fuse that we've tested. We've used one of these. This tells us that it's a zero, but when the ignition goes on, it's a 12 volt. So we've used one of them. We've put the ignition off and on, off and on, off and on, like 10 times and tested it. We've then piggybacked off that ignition live, which means there's no reason right now why this car won't air out. The whole thing's done. There's a lot of tidying up to do, panels everywhere, but this whole thing will air out. So McGill's gonna press the button for us. Just the on all side. Yeah, wait there though. I'm going for the full reaction. The reaction piece is the one, right? Send it, lad. Ignition will start. Try ignition first. Oh, I wouldn't start the car, just ignition. Oh, wait, wait there. What have we got here? <laughs> Why is it not on? Do you have to start the car? Ah, ring For him. the battery. Ring him. So just open the shutter and start it. Would you start a car on access stands? Well, you've got no choice, have you? <laughs> You're not going to be able to get the wheels on to drop it to take the jack out. <clears throat> Is there no lights on the on the? Th is no lights lit up on the um, the manifold the boxes or anything like that? I'll be right back. It's not working. Okay, we're absolutely daft as a brush right now. We've left the manifold out, which was never gonna start ever in its life and its history. Right, so that's now plugged in. All the airlines are in. Wait there, Craig. Go ahead, lad. Mate's doing doing something on the thing. Is it? Are we on? Oh, English. Morning. Yeah. <laughs> we got it! Eh? Well, you look to see if you see the bike doing anything. Jeez, we got it, eh, right? No way. Feel the tank, like vibrating. So. We've turned it on, I'm not touching anything, it's calibrating, as you can hear. Oh, sounds sick. Oh, so it just does it itself? Yeah, yeah, I'm not doing it, look. Basically before, when we first turned on, I pressed the wrong thing on the menu, so it went like, I'll do it on myself. Yeah, yeah. Listen to that. Quacho, what are you doing? What's that, lad? Is he freaking out? What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Air rod, Quacho, I know you've got air rod. Whoa! What's that? What's that? I think he just ran and grabbed me air hose now, I just ragged it everywhere. Tell him, lad. Insane. It's done. It's insane. It's done! It is official. We have got air ride installed, working, operating, and bang on the money. It is absolutely sick. I'm gonna do some cool clips of it going up and down. Enjoy.
pressure to turn off. It's filling up. I've just aired it out for about 100 clips so the tank's pretty drained. The compressor's buzzing right now, filling the tank up. Life on air is treating me well. I would do it every single time over again. It was one of the coolest things I've ever done. Shout out McGill for hooking it up, doing the build with me. Offset Auto House and S30 BMX for helping me out with all the knowledge, getting hold of the kit, all that stuff. So sick. And we're on 120 PSI. So yeah, that's gonna be the end of today's video. I hope you're enjoying the aired out build. Mark 7 golf heads, if you've not got air on your car, you've got to send it. It's so sick with the air rod on it. I've aired it out about 15 times today, and it's 5 o'clock in the afternoon, and I've literally had it slammed at every location. Go on Tesco for milk, slam it out. If you go on the petrol station to put fuel in, air it out. But yeah, it's proper sick. I learned loads and loads and loads of little bits across the week that we've been messing about with it. I'm going to do a video in the future of things that I've learned, the way it drives, the way it handles, all sorts of stuff, operating it with the computer and stuff. I've got another video planned with the air ride, so for those of you who, for those of you who've really enjoyed the air ride build, stay tuned, there's gonna be a lot more coming in the future. Make sure you go and check out Owner, link is in the description. You get a free snapback cap with every single order. Just go to the link in the description, pick your favorite snapback cap and you'll get it for free, it's that simple. Shout out to everyone that's well into the air ride, I'm right with yous, and I'll see yous in the next video. Peace out.